I'm Heidi Spleet. I'm here with Dr. Patricia Katz of the University of California, San Francisco, to talk about her work on depression and rheumatoid arthritis. What prompted you to conduct this study? I've had a long-standing interest in depression in rheumatoid arthritis, um, probably because part of my background is in psychology. And uh, Dr. Christina Bode, who's a co-author on the study, was visiting, uh, working with us for a short period of time. And she brought up the question of what are the patterns of depression over time and how, how does it affect other symptoms. So we started looking at it, and one thing we found initially was that people who were more depressed were likely, more likely to drop out of our longitudinal study. And we wondered, was this because they just didn't want to participate anymore, or were they dropping out because they were dying? And that was the, the uh, genesis of the study. You found that the risk was significantly greater in men. Could you talk about that? We were, were surprised by that because the, because the um, the risk was so much higher. Men were more likely to die over the observational period than, than women anyway. The risk was about two and a half times that of women. But uh, men who were depressed were five or six times more likely to, to, to die um, than women who were not depressed. Which, and, and that's a, a very big increase. I, I don't know why, but I, can, I have some thoughts about why that might be. Um, and I, I think part of it is that um, depression is, when people who are depressed tend not to maybe take care of themselves as well. We know it's associated with poor adherence to medication. Um, men may be more likely to not only be taking uh, medications for their RA, but they may also be, have cardiovascular disease, and so if there's something going on that's affecting adherence with any of those medications, then it might have, a, have a, an impact. We also know that there's an inflammatory component to depression and to RA and to cardiovascular disease, and if those um, tend to interact in, in a particularly strong way, maybe in men, because they're cardiovascular disease risk may be higher. So it, it's an unknown. I think that men are understudied in RA, and there's a reason for that because it's not as prevalent, but it, it, it creates a lot of questions that we really don't have answers for. What's the take-home message for clinicians from your study findings? I think the take-home message is that depression is important to look for, but to see changes, you have to monitor it over time, which means you have to probably look at it every time you see a patient. And with men, if you ask them if they're feeling depressed, even if they are depressed, they probably won't tell you, or they may not tell you, because they might downplay their symptoms. Um, men tend to exhibit other behaviors when they're depressed. Maybe they drink more, maybe they withdraw. So I think it's particularly difficult with men to tease that out, and, and clinicians just need to be aware of those factors.